This is the From Ashes DLC. Wait a minute, this game just came out. How is their DLC? So, originally, I, on the podcast, I was defending their choice to have day one DLC. Uh, maybe defending's not the right word. I wasn't admonishing EA and Bioware for including day one DLC in their game. Oh, so first off, I should say that if you're interested in watching this mission with all the cutscenes uh, because you didn't order the collector's edition, uh, there Is will that be. Is a pun? Collector's edition? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, no, but it should be. It should be, right? Uh huh. The Reaper's edition. The Reaper edition. Ooh. The collector edition. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, um, sorry for the pun. The you completely killed my train of thought. <laughs> DLC, day one. Day one, DLC. I'm posting this video in case you didn't want to buy the day one DLC and didn't buy the collector's edition. So, originally I um, wasn't angry about the day one DLC because I said, well, Mass Effect has it and practically every other game has it. What do you mean by Mass Effect? Mass Effect 2 okay. had day one DLC. But it wasn't day one DLC in the same way that this is day one DLC. I bought the game. I pre-ordered it. Okay, I, I'm recording on the PC now in case you hadn't figured that out because it looks so much better on the PC than it does on any of the consoles. Um, the... I, I pre-ordered it and I got Battlefield 3 for free. It's a good deal. It was such a successful deal that they shut that down within a day. Like, they offered that, and apparently it was so successful that they put out a press release saying, oh, nope, this isn't available anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, just kidding. The demand is too uh, high. <laughs> yeah. You know, this digital thing, yeah, we can't keep doing this. So I got, I, I waited for the exact right moment to buy this game. But my point is, I didn't get this and I pre-order the game. You had to buy the collector's edition of this game to get this. Mass Effect 2, it had a couple missions that were... Well, what is this? That, uh, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get into it in just a second. Mass Effect 2 had a couple missions that were part of what EA has always called their Project $10, which is to charge $10 for people who buy their games used. So when I played... Mass Effect 2 on multiple profiles, I had to spend ten I had to spend ten extra time. dollars because yeah, because I was using two Xbox Live profiles, which is kind of screwy. Um, but this is different. And this is a pretty goddamn major part of the game. So if you if you've played through every other Mass Effect, I would highly recommend... Hmm. I don't recommend spending $10 on this because I think it's a fucking sham the way that they handled this. But I highly recommend at least watching the cutscene. Okay. Because you, on this mission, you are on Eden Prime, which is... It's, it's almost a callback to... Well, it, it is a callback to the first mission of the first game. The first mission of Mass Effect 1 was on Eden Prime. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of revisiting where you were, which is kind of cool. It's, it's always cool when they do stuff like that, you know? Um, but you also get a new squad mate that, for me, making my guide makes it a lot easier because he's an adept. Fish dicks? Nope. Fish sticks, <laughs> you don't get to play with them at all in this game. You, you don't get to play with fish sticks. Uh, the, the new squad mate is an adept that you can combo powers with that makes it easier for you. Mm -hmm. And he has pretty cool powers. But he's also a Prothean. And if you're familiar at all with this franchise and the story, a living, breathing Prothean is kind of insane. Like, it's been 10,000, or it's between ten and 50,000 years in game history since a Prothean has been alive. So this guy is basically a fossil, mm -hmm. and he came back to life, and he's living, talking, breathing, fighting with you. 
and he provides a lot of information if you're really interested in this story. And it's kind of fucking ridiculous that they didn't include that in the full version of the game. Yeah. Like, it, I, I, so the cutscene that I just edited out right there, uh, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff. And he's actually a really cool character. He's a complete condescending asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's really cool. So, like, the Protheans are this extremely advanced race. That were, they, they had, the, they were working on the technology to destroy the Reapers, right? Yes. That's why you were there on Mars, to examine Prothean, Techno- that, mo- that technology model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Um, and so he's insanely advanced. Now, in terms of actual gameplay, he's not that advanced compared to Shepard. Yeah. Which is always kind of like game slash story breaking. It's like, oh, he's this insanely advanced guy, but he is actually insanely aggressive and dies all the time. <laughs> but he's got these cool powers. But, like, he's... He's so condescending, like he's, uh, <laughs> like he talks shit about all the other races. He's like a human and a sorry. What the hell? Why am I dealing with all these lower class races? Like, you're writing now. You can speak. Yeah, it's like we're dealing with dogs and cats. Yeah, that that that's exactly what it's like. Fucking dog, really? Dogs talk now. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I have to run like, around with a bunch of dogs. I'm dealing with these <laughs> filthy Mongols. Like, what the hell is going on? Why am I wasting these time? Sorry, Carl. Oh, I'm the last one of my race. And I guess I'm going to dedicate my life to defeating the Reapers. It's it, it's re- He's a really cool character. And I, I'm pretty upset that they didn't include this. And that I didn't get to play through with him my entire first run. Because... On my second time through, I'm skipping all the cutscenes. I'm not listening to all that shit again because I just played through it. It's just fresh and it's kind of fucking boring hearing it all again. Even if you play like um, good versus bad, like you change, it mm-hmm. doesn't really change that much. Yeah. Um, but apparently, he contributes a lot throughout the game. If you have him as a squad mate, like he contributes a lot to the different conversations that happen throughout the missions. That's, yeah, that's whack. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I really don't like it. So you're not going to get 100% of what he would bring to the game if you only watched the other video. It's I think it's like 45 minutes. Yeah, it's 45 minutes, <laughs> and I cut it down to 15 minutes for this gameplay. So that's the, that gives you kind of an idea of so what... 30 minutes of cutscenes. Right. There's also a good 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the end. Uh, you know when you're in the ship and you can investigate and ask them more questions? Yeah. There's probably 10 minutes of that. Okay. But there's a lot of dialogue with him kind of explaining and showing like how he ended up where he is right now. And now uh, another interesting point. So what I read today on 1UP okay. was they you were still read 1UP? Are they in your newsfeed or something? Yeah. Okay. They had an article about how EA is shutting down a bunch of unused or low use uh, servers. I servers. saw that headline. I didn't read into and it. And it was kind of about how it's fucked up if you bought the EA's ten dollar pass and oh. the server's gone. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> you pay ten dollars to play multiplayer and it doesn't exist. The other side of that article was, uh, I think it was like the Saboteur or some sh- some game I never played. Mm-hmm. There was some DLC where they're shutting down the DLC server, so you can't even get that DLC ever again. Hmm. Because it's not on a disc anywhere. You have to download it. And once they decide this game's not popular enough, you can't download it anymore. So, 10 years from now, when Mass Effect 3 isn't played very much and they shut down the server this dlc that you're talking about is gone that was cool yeah (laughs) that's one of my favorite things about being an adept shit just goes flying sometimes that's gone forever yeah like you can't buy a disc of this well i guess the collector's edition but like 
It's say it was only DLC. I don't even know if the collector's edition includes it on the disc. So, okay, so say the server goes down in 10 years. Yeah. All that content's gone. Um, I understand your hypothetical, but as a more realistic proposition, mm -hmm. I don't think Mass Effect DLC is going anywhere. I think it'll be available forever because it's such a popular franchise. But more likely, EA goes out of business and okay. whoever buys their... Uh, their portfolio of IPs Doesn't decides want that we that don't server. want to transfer. That's a much we more realistic. That, server. that is a very realistic thing okay. to happen, which yeah. could happen well, to THQ and all their Saints Row shit. Yeah. And uh, they have another game that's coming out. Darksiders 2 that's coming out in a couple yeah, months. But I'm saying, like, something this integral to the story. Yeah. That... I mean, I didn't know anything about this until right now. This, the saboteur. But the fact... I wasn't the saboteur. Maybe it was a saboteur. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was basically a DLC where you could go into the strip club and they wouldn't have clothes on. <laughs> where in the game they did. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's what they made it sound like. Oh. But anyway, it's just like, that's fucking retarded. Yeah, that's kind of Especially ridiculous. if it's available on day one. I, yeah, like day one. I, if I it's something that integral. I remember bitching about this a lot on the podcast. And I just wrote it off as shenanigans because we've already seen this before and I just didn't pay any credence to it but it and shut up Carl my whole thing about DLC or whatever yeah or paid DLC so like League of Legends is a free game mm -hmm. you can get a full League of Legends experience without spending a dime but if you do spend a dime it's yeah, on skins and shit line. it should be skins and shit it yeah. shouldn't be like fucking game altering like oh wow yeah. I was really missing out. Yeah, this is a pretty <laughs> dramatic DLC. Yeah. This isn't something... It shouldn't be that. No, you're right. And I I'm don't. okay with day one DLC as long as it's superficial. And, well, uh, what about with the way Mass Effect 2 did it? What if this was Mass Effect 2 and they used that model where this is the Project $10 where they included this with a scratch-off code for anybody that bought it new? I don't know. The way that like Gears of War 2 did it even, where... Uh, I'm that, against that, all that There's a couple shit. multiplayer maps. <laughs> I'm against all that shit. I'm not, actually. Day one? Just fucking let it be. But that's not day one DLC. If you bought it on day one, it's included. If you paid okay. $60... Well, then, yeah, I sure. didn't realize that yeah. this didn't... I'm Okay, I don't know what the price difference is between this and... Uh, no, I understand the, the collector's company edition. wanting to get... But if I could have paid $10 extra for the collector's edition, got something else, and this, I would yeah. have done that. I didn't realize how this was portioned out. As a consumer, I'm against it all. As a person who understands business, I understand why they'd want to incentivize new purchases over used purchases. But this isn't even that. This yeah, is, I know, I know. This I'm, is I'm talking about Mass collector's Effect edition versus... I'm talking about two. Yeah, the whole collector's edition thing, that's what bothers the shit out of me. Okay, so this is the first Atlas we've seen in the game. So now what I'm just doing is throwing warp and then throw. Warp, throw, warp, throw, warp, throw. And it just does a ton of damage. Once you get him down to the armor, you just absolutely tear through his health. Uh, one extra... One other thing that's kind of... Actually, it's a game mechanic that I think is kind of fucking stupid. But, um... If you... Uh, order your teammates to attack him, and on the... Uh, on the PC, it's by aiming at him and tapping Q and E. That's ordering your teammates to move or attack. So, like, the D-pad. They do more damage. That's crazy. I don't like it. No. I don't like that at all. I don't That's either. a stupid game mechanic. That is. Is it the same on the Xbox? Probably. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think it's left and right on the. It is. Yeah. They do more damage, so I should always be actively pressing left and right when I'm aimed at an enemy. Uh, yeah, it's probably only worth doing it In versus. In theory, it's probably only worth doing it versus large boss enemies. But that's. Yeah. It's okay. a dumb game mechanic. Yeah. Four out of five. Gershman's right. One out of five. <laughs> Unskippable cutscenes. <laughs>